Alright, hey guys, and welcome back, as this week I'm going to be taking a look at a line of Hot Wheels cars that I loved a lot growing up as a kid in the 80s, and still like just as much now. And that's the Hot Wheels Speed Demons line, released in 1986. Now this line of cars made by Hot Wheels was much different than their run-of-the-mill sports cars and construction vehicles that they were known for, as this had a lot of monsters and animals and futuristic robot styles that had never been seen before and were designed to appeal to an audience that was into a lot of the Transformers and G.I. Joe inspired cartoons of the time. You could of course buy them in single packs as there was a series of 11 to collect from, and they were really popular even in South America too, as I have two of the different styles of packaging here. There was also a second style of packaging that came out later in 1989, when you had more of the robots and additional monster cars that would also come out. They were also available in a pack of five if you wanted to give your collection a jump start. Alright, so let's take a look at some of the different Hot Wheels Speed Demons that I have here. I have the full series of 11, plus a couple of other variations that we'll take a look at today. This first one here is the Double Demon. This was one of the very first cars to be released in 1986. And as you can see, it's a really nice red and chrome and orange coloration. The paint jobs on these cars are great. Um, you have a mix of metallic with the plastic elements as well, and the wheels spin really fast. These are really fast-moving cars, and that's why they get their name. Um, that's also how you can tell Speed Demons apart, is the style of wheels. Um, you can see he has the two different demon faces, one that's kind of closed on the back and one that's more open on the front, and it's just a really, really cool-looking dragster. So we'll put him back over here. And now we will move on to the second one, and this is the Ratmobile. And the Ratmobile was released in 1988, so this was a later model. And he has a nice white color, and he has his tail curving around the back. And you gotta love that great grinning face on the front. He's kind of comical, reminds me of like Jerry from Tom and Jerry, it's what I imagine uh, him if he was in a car hot rod form. And the face just looks really great. Just look at that evil, uh, hot rodden, racing grin. Um, really great eyes and nose and teeth. And even just for being uh, all base white color, he still looks good. Um, the tail looks like it can move, but it does not. It's fixed in the one position. Uh, but still a really nice looking car and uh, pretty, pretty well done too. Uh, most of the cars that you'll see in this series, especially in the first series, they were all made in Malaysia, as you can see stamped on the bottom. And we will put him back and move on to the Cargoyle car. And this was another one of the first initial run series uh, Speed Demons. It was released in 1986. And there's a couple color variations of him, but this is the original orange and kind of a purple or a burgundy spotted uh, pattern on the back. He almost looks like a cheetah. That's what I first thought he was when uh, I got him a couple of years ago. And he has a really weird design. You can see the engine, like, underneath of his mouth. Looks like he's almost eating the engine. Looks kind of uncomfortable, honestly. Uh, it still looks cool. You got the, the legs and the spotted uh, pattern down nice, as well as with a lot of the, uh, a lot of the chrome textures. And it uh, looks really cool. He's definitely kind of spooky um, with the eyes. And just a nice looking little car. All right, we'll put him back in his parking spot here. And now this is another one of my very, very favorites. This is the Turboa. And uh, they really nailed the design on this one, I think, from the colors to the design and just the whole look of the car just looks fantastic. Um, there's a lot of other color designs like purple and oranges, but this is the original, uh, the yellow and green design. As you can guess, he is a boa constrictor snake made into uh, kind of like an Indy 500 or like a Ferrari race car. Uh, it just looks so great. That yellow pops really nice with the green um, checkered pattern on his back. And even looks like a King Cobra with the fanning uh, as the silver chrome seat with the engine and the uh, low profile foil on the back as well as the spoiler on the back with the dual exhaust. And everything just really comes together nicely uh, with this car and just a really good fusion of functionality and uh, sleek design with some nice painted colors. 
And now another one of my very, very favorites, uh, just because of the, the goofy look of this car. This is the Shark Cruiser, released in 1987. And uh, the design on this little car is really, really great. The colors, and especially the chrome on this, really pops really well. Um, he just looks like something out of a cartoon, or like street sharks, and it's just really, really awesome. Uh, the first thing you'll notice right off the bat are just those amazing chrome teeth that are larger than life, and that great, great shark smile on the front with the black and white beady eyes. Uh, he just has a mass of chrome tailpipes coming out from under the body and over the tail and the fins. Um, the fins are also another thing that really make this vehicle pop and just really make it fit, you know, to where it's a shark hot, uh, hot rod and just looks awesome. Just very comical and very cool. Alrighty, and now this is another one of the uh, original series from 1986. This is Fangster, and I kind of didn't know what he was when I first got him, but he's supposed to be like a crocodile or an alligator. He almost looks like he would just be like a mutant alien or something like that. Uh, the first thing you notice about this guy right off the bat are those big, bright red eyes that just bulge out of his head. Um, they got the scaling detail done very nicely on the body as well as the claws, as well as his uh, more vertical scales that go along the tail and along the back, and the hands and claws and even the teeth underneath of the mouth look really nice. Um, but yeah, I actually didn't know he was like a an alligator at first glance, kind of like a dragon or just some type of a monster. Alright, and moving along, another one of my favorites. It's always hard to say my favorites. I like so many of these in this line. Uh, this is the 1986 original Evil Weevil, and uh, I really like the name. That's kind of reminds me of like Evil Knievel or something like that, but just a cool, creepy little uh, car that's obviously supposed to be like a little little weevil or like a scorpion almost, you would think. Um, there's a nice fusion on here with the uh, the pincers on the front. They look really good with the bugged out yellow eyes and he has the uh, eight metal legs and even like a hatch which looks kind of weird like it's a tank as if the driver would slam that shut. You got the stinger on the back and the green and yellow paint job above the eyes, and he's just a really, really cool looking car. Very, very interesting. And moving right along here, this is the 1987 uh, Zombot car. And he's really cool because he has uh, a different function that you might not expect. You can flip him up by grabbing his feet, and he turns into an action figure. He's like a little, uh, you know, robot that you could set up, and, you know, I guess whatever your imagination, uh, you know, have little adventures in space with him or whatever. He has a, a laser rifle that he's holding in his hands that's supposed to be like his exhaust engine. And you can even see, I don't know how well the camera will pick it up here, but you can see the circuitry that's kind of imprinted on his face. It's supposed to be like wires and microchips and just that crazy blue chrome style that looks really, really good. And uh, some versions even have like a red or a pink laser gun. And we will put him here. And you can say either this is his best friend or arch enemy. This is a very similar car, but this is the Phanto Machine also released in 1987, so we can say this is his nemesis here. And uh, he doesn't have a weapon, but he's just like your uh, general type of robot. And uh, he has a very nice silver chrome paint job. These guys really shine. They look really awesome uh, with the face and the circuitry again. And they're, they're just really cool. This is very creative that they made them so they could stand up. And, you know, you could, ah, oh, they're going to fight it out you know, see who's going to be your robot overlords, and uh, they're just really cool, and a really, really cool idea to, you know, take something that's like, hey, well, you know, they're not just cars, they can also be little action figures, too, so I think that's really neat. And moving along now, this is another one of the original series, this is the 1986 release of Vampira which kind of looks like a dragon, but is really just supposed to be like a vampire bat. And this is a really neat and original design, I think. I love the color on this. The purple looks great and really pops, really looks nice. 
Uh, you have a lot of good painting on this as well, with the white and red eyes in the front. Uh, the ears look good, and that really makes it shine as uh, like a little vampire bat with the pointy ears. And you have the white and orange and red paint job on the back of the wings, which they look really good. They, you know, they just really fit the mold of like a vampire bat wing shape. And you have the chrome engine and the teeth underneath of the jaw. And now this would have been a later release. This would have been, a, I believe, a 1992 or 1994 release. And this is a color changers uh, vampire that I believe would change into like a purple from a blue or from the blue to the purple. So just so you can see the differences here between the two, uh, there's not as much chrome. You have the blue body and the pink arms and the engine on top, instead of being chrome, is yellow. Uh, but still really neat. Just thought you guys would like to see that variation on the line here. And probably one of the rarest of all to find, or at least one of the hardest to find in its original condition, uh, this would be the 1988 release of Rodzilla. And as you can see, this is much, much different than the rest of them, and uh, kind of just looks like a giant serpent, or, you know, of course they're going for Godzilla here, but uh, it doesn't quite look like Godzilla, it just looks like a giant giant dragon, but still, you can appreciate what they were going for with this huge robot dragon, you know, Godzilla monster uh, with the robot parts going down the neck, and the robot arms, and I uh, have the big drag racing engine in the middle, and the tail that goes around the back, and one other neat thing about this figure, too, is that you can move the head around, so that way it's either facing over the engine, or you can have it turn the other way, where it's looking long ways, but either way you display it, it really, really looks cool, and just has a very unique look all its own. Alright, so that's going to do it for the Hot Wheels Speed Demons line this week. Hope you guys enjoyed taking a look at the history of this neat line with me today, and I'll see you back here next week. Take care. Hey guys, if you liked the video that you just watched, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below, and you can follow me at Facebook at King of Retro or Twitter at hashtag 8 Brian. See you next time.